right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So welcome back to another episode of the Man That Can Project podcast. I'm so stoked to see everyone sharing their previous episodes. We have had a huge spike in listens over the last three weeks. So thank you guys who are sharing it, recommending it to your friends and just everyone who's coming across it from, well, wherever you're coming across from it, welcome to the Man That Can Project family. And just before we do dive into the episode, we're two weeks away from the first Man That Can Project Foundations Workshop for 2019. So we got have two spaces left. So 28 spaces are gone. 28 men are coming along to have their lives changed. Okay, they're going to learn those foundational things to get more clarity around who they are as a man, get more direction in their life, and overcome the fear of being seen, right? They want to, we want to give them the power and the tools to step into their authentic self because the moment that they start doing that and they create that certainty, I know they're going to show up in their lives how they want to. So it's going to be super exciting for those 28 blokes. I know we will get those last two spots filled. So super, super, super excited about that. Make sure you stay tuned on all the socials to see what's going on there behind the scenes at the event. Uh, But definitely, once again, if you do feel it maybe for you of where you're at in your life, then definitely slide into my DMs or jump onto the Man That Can Project podcast. uh, Sorry, the Man That Can Project dot com forward slash workshop, and you'll be able to check out more about it today. So our guest today. A longtime friend, Jay Bovino. So he's a musician. He plays in the band Shepherd, who have uh, huge success. Um, their biggest song being Geronimo, but they've absolute many, many belters out there. So just search them on Spotify or uh, Apple Music or YouTube or all the, all those music platforms, and you'll be able to have a listen. I might even uh, drop some tunes in here at some point. But Jay and I have been mates for probably six years now and we first met, obviously I'm I'm dating a good friend of his and also a member of the band Shepherd, Amy, uh, and we've been mates for for years. We've obviously got a funny story of how we first met, but that's another time for another podcast. But Jay is one of the most genuine, caring and passionate people I have met. Like he, the amount of time he devotes to his craft and just wanting to be the best he can be is, is really something that I, I perceive as inspiring uh, and it's something that I love. But today's episode or, or this episode that you're about to listen to is showing a different side to Jay, right? And, you know, he when this episode came out, he'd just gone through a recent breakup and he really wanted to start opening up and sharing a few things that he'd learned. You know, a few of the points where he's been avoiding the emotional dips or the low points in his life because, well, he was scared of feeling that. And I think a lot of us men can relate to that but what he found out from that because he was sort of trying to stay neutral he wasn't really feeling the highs he didn't get to experience all the happiness and the excitement that was there for him he got a little bit of that but never really allowed himself to just truly lean into that so i'm excited to see how his life's going to continue to evolve from from this episode and from his realization that that's a a a growth opportunity for him and and just how he articulates it and the the open conversation we had was was honestly one of the best uh, episodes I've, I've done. So once again, guys, if you love this episode, please share it on your socials, leave a review, just jump on there. I'd love everyone and appreciate you guys so much for taking, you know, whether it's you know, 90 seconds out of your time to jump on there, leave a review and, and give it a five star. It means so much and it obviously helps me know that the message is getting shared and you guys are getting value. But that's enough from me, guys. Jump on into the episode and please enjoy. Jay, welcome to the Man That Can Project podcast. This is exciting. Thanks for having this me. This has been a long time coming, I reckon. This it is has. six years we in have, the making. Yeah, we've spoken about this a lot. I'm excited for it. So what sort of made this actually happen after years of speaking about it? It was you know, an event that you've experienced recently that brought a lot of stuff up for you and I guess brought, and I'll let you share it without me, if you feel comfortable sharing it when we go into it. Without me uh, diving into it, but more so touching on vulnerability of men and like how much it restricts us from having a certain quality of life and what it can actually bring to you in the realizations that you've had. So everyone who listens, we're going to start with vulnerability, but who knows where it's going to go. Like it's going to be a lot of insightful stuff for men really who are struggling to understand their mind or what would you say, asking yourself the correct questions with what you need to learn about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I just recently went through a breakup 
and it really made me reflect a lot on who I was. It um, sort of broke down the walls that I'd built up over the last decade. Anytime I experienced any sort of hurt or heartache, I'd add another brick to the walls around my heart to block any future pain. And uh, I thought that that was the right thing to do. I thought I had it all figured out. I thought, yeah, this is being strong. This is being an adult. I'm learning from my mistakes and weaknesses and preventing myself from future heartache. And I was very proud of that. I thought that I'd built up the perfect system to avoid any sort of pain. But what I didn't realize in doing so is that I wasn't just blocking the lows. I was blocking the love and joy and the highs that tend to precede it. You know, with, without mountains, there'd be no valleys. So I was in a state of what I was calling cruise control. And I bragged that that was the best way to live. But I didn't realize in avoiding the worst parts of life, I was missing the best parts. And so I unfairly entered a relationship with these walls in place and blocked myself from both giving and receiving love, wholly and completely. And naturally, the relationship suffered because of that. But unfortunately, it wasn't something I could see whilst in the relationship. It wasn't something I could feel because the walls weren't letting me. I just knew I was unhappy with who I was, but I never questioned it was because of these walls. I thought this was a smart way to be in a relationship, which is insane when I say it out loud. What were you trying, like, so you went into it with the walls up, but were there ever points where you felt challenged and, like, you needed to start letting it down? Was there ever that realisation or...? Yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, more towards the end, when she would vocalise that she needed more from me, I would open up a little, like removing a brick from the wall, um, enough to release a bit more love, but still not enough to be penetrated. But it wasn't until the breakup when I was finally vulnerable enough to tear down those deep-rooted walls that I constructed. And I had no idea what the effect was going to be. Um, a decade's worth of repressed love came pouring out of me. Everything I felt for my partner, but couldn't express all the love I had for her that was blocked behind the walls was now bursting out from the seams. I felt like a kid again, so pure and romantic about life. I felt like who I was before I started protecting myself. And it sort of affected me in more ways than I thought living like that, because obviously it, it ran deeper than my relationship with my partner, but also my relationship with my family and friends. I was becoming a lone wolf to avoid feeling anything it's interesting like you you say that right like uh, if everything happens for us not to us uh, i speak about it all the time and this happened for you to have that realization but it's interesting how we a lot of men or people in general we don't like pain obviously we try to get away from it which is c probably common sense because we fear death as a result of that but then obviously when you're going into a relationship with walls which a lot of us blokes do is that we're fearful of what could happen if we show vulnerability. We're fearful of what could happen if we say how we really feel or what we really value in a relationship or what we'd really like from our partner because we're like, oh, maybe if I do show this softer side, she might think, you know, the stereotypical things, I'm gay or I'm not a man, you know, all these things that I know for myself, I always thought that. So I built this identity around who I thought I should be for the partner and like you touched on, it's like you feel kind of shit because you know deep down you want more and you feel like you've got more to give but you've got to be the guy that you built yourself to be and it, it's also then I know for myself like when I had anxiety and insecurities I was like what if I do show up as my my best self or the the real lucky and that's not good enough and I took that personally and I was like what you know I just thought about it personally I was like what if I am then not good enough what if she thinks I'm not good enough rather than going well hold up what about if I put myself forward and if I'm not good enough for her, I'm definitely going to be good enough for the right person when I actually start being that person. And I never asked myself that. I just lived in fear of judgment and of uh, what people might say about me if I did show, show up as myself. And that made me fucking anxious. And I think the more I thought about it, the, I was like, I've got to be tougher. I've got to really show that I'm not mm. this lucky. I'm actually this guy that I've built. Yeah, for sure. And it all really boils down to fear. We're either piloted by fear or love, and that subconsciously, as a result, affects every other aspect of our lives. 
And it's so clear to me now that I was leading with fear and not love. And that fear was in control of every part of my life. This is how I was living, you know, fearful of putting myself out there, taking risks, making choices. I used to always say, if, if I don't make a choice, I can't make the wrong one. And I was always sort of plagued by that idea. So I was just watching life go by, always petering on the edge. Um, you know, just in case I got spooked, I could quickly jump off unharmed. But fear consumed me. I was such a no man. My gut reaction to anything or anyone taking me out of my comfort zone was always no. It didn't matter what it was. Before I could even process the question, I was ready to say no. I mean, uh, you know, we went to Vanuatu together. You saw how long it took me to get in the water or use the swing rope. It really all boils down to being afraid to show my true self and be vulnerable. Um, I went into this relationship at 29, which was my first long-term relationship. I avoided them for so long to prevent, you know, the lows, to avoid this heartache that I'm currently going through, which is ironic. But to my friends, I was always the the bachelor. I'd have these two-month flings, and then before anyone... And then before anything became serious or anyone would get attached, I'd leave. And I was very anti-relationships and everyone knew it. I was quite vocal about it. Making fun of my friends in relationships, again, out of fear. They were doing something that I couldn't do. They were being vulnerable. So when I met my partner, I was head over heels. I was very smitten. But I couldn't let my friends know that because I feared they'd be like, oh, Mr anti-relationships is in love as if they see me as a fraud or a hypocrite yeah but really i was just embarrassed embarrassed that i had spoken all that nonsense for years and now i understood now i i got it and i knew that i most likely only spoke that way because i wasn't in love because i wasn't in an awesome loving relationship like my friends so i talked it down and pretended i was so happy living the single life which I wasn't. But I just couldn't swallow my pride and admit I was wrong, admit that I was head over heels. So I played it down and sort of convinced them that, you know, oh no, it's it's different. I'm I'm still the same person. What we have is cool and different and modern and yeah. we're independent and we do our own thing. But it's funny we were speaking outside as well. Like you couldn't admit you loved her because deep down you didn't love yourself, right? And it's it's weird to be able to give something to others which you don't give to yourself which is what we were speaking about. And there's a lot of us who try to get it from external, whether it's another person or materialistic, whatever it is, you know, external validation without asking ourselves the question. It's like, oh, maybe this girl will, you know, if she loves me, then I must be worthy, right? Rather than going, what do I have to do to actually love myself? Yeah. And it is then going, well, hold on, I've just built this castle around me that is not letting anyone in. How do I pull out the foundations of that to then find out who I am and be proud of proud of that man for sure yeah for sure well I was I was just watching this great TED talk on vulnerability actually and the uh the speaker came to the conclusion after years of study that the only difference between people that feel a sense of love and belonging uh as opposed to the ones that don't is that they believe they are worthy of love and belonging and that really hit me because it it made me reflect a lot on the person I was. And deep down, I didn't believe I was worthy of love and belonging. Over the years, I guess I just started to think so little of myself that I didn't believe I had anything to offer anyone and therefore couldn't really feel that sense of love and belonging. I would then admit that I'd tell myself and others that I'm just not that great of a person. And that would somehow make it okay if I was aware of it and, and owned it and convinced myself it was okay. Then it somehow justified being that way. I just accepted that that's who I was um, and I settled. I thought I couldn't change it, so I stupidly owned it. But the breakup broke down those walls and I could see that I wasn't happy. And I had years of repressed love just pouring out of me. And every part of myself that I didn't like became so clear. I had some sort of ego death, a, a a paradigm shift where everything I once thought and believed and all the parts of my psyche that I didn't like just completely disintegrated. Yeah. And what was left was someone pure and unadulterated. I kind of felt like a kid again. I felt like who I used to be, a guy that would walk around with 
long plaits and flowers in his hair and not really think twice about it. And then I guess as I went through life and, you know, the, the world sort of cut me down, and called me a hippie, I started to blend in, started to build up my walls brick by brick. And because I couldn't beat them, I joined them. And I think everyone does this over time. We don't really register it because it's a gradual process and you sort of box it away as being an adult and you say, this is growing up, this is toughening up and getting on with it, which is such a funny thought because you talk to anyone of any age and they all still feel like a kid. No one ever really feels like an adult. I think there's just a stigma around that word adult. We turn 21 and we think, okay, okay, I'm an adult now. And then you just put so much pressure on yourself to act a certain way and have your life figured out. So you know how you, you say like leading with positivity? I'd love to hear your perspective on this because I'm sure people in the past have probably said to you, just be, just be positive, just be happy. And obviously when you're on the flip side of that, it's easier said than done and like there's more to it. Like yeah. for you, what, what shifted in your mind that has enabled you to sort of say that to yourself? Like just, you know, I'm going to be positive now. Yeah, so uh, again, I, I don't think it's a choice of being positive. I think, as I was saying before, if we're either piloted by fear or love, I think being driven by fear stops you from feeling that positivity. You're generally bitter and negative. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was changing that aspect, leading with love, which then welcomed in positivity. Yeah. And I was feeling, I've been feeling fatigued for years. And just recently after the breakup, I thought, you know, I, I should get a blood test to see if there's something actually going on. I'm low in, in some levels. Um, and I just got the results back this morning. And, and he said, you've... You heard it here first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, your, uh, your levels are as healthy as they can be. And he said, yeah, so what you were feeling was, was definitely mental. Now, I, I had to agree because in the three weeks since I've had this sort of breakthrough... I haven't felt fatigued. Have you ever thought about it like this? I just think of this now that if you've had, had that feelings of fatigue for years, it's almost like your body subconsciously giving you a message to say, hey, stop, I want you to lay down and actually think. Mm -hmm. Like I always think about it when I have my, you know, go through bouts of anxiety or, you know, actually, uh, no, you weren't in PNG when I locked myself in the room for a bit because I was just feeling depressed as hell. And when I reflect on it, I'm like, my body's just, you're just giving yourself signs to actually do some inner work. It's like, and people will think this is weird, but it's like, this is when I do the most self-reflection because I'm like, what, what is making me anxious or what is making me feel so down at the moment? And then I, you know, for me, it's not about solving it overnight. It's just going, okay, what can I piece together from this experience that may have a correlation or a pattern to the last time I felt like this? And doing it, you know, when I feel excited, sad, happy, all those emotions so then I can start piecing together what caused because we're all unique and experience it individually and there's different triggers for all of us but if we can take the time to think about those things and you know there might be patterns and I know a massive pattern for me is if I miss exercise for too long and drink too much or and this sounds like it's simple and um, don't eat well like my mental health plummets so I know for myself if I've missed two days of training I'm like, I've got to move or I'm at risk of going downhill mm -hmm. and that's just what I've learned for myself and I feel like maybe I, I think I put out on a story yesterday like for people to start testing it like why don't we test it we're trying all these other things to improve our mental health why not take a self-reflection minute in the morning to go 100%. why don't I I woke up feeling like crap why could that be yeah. rather than just assuming it's normal yeah yeah well it's absurd for me to even say that I felt it for years to feel that for That's years a lot of time right? and exactly and not do anything about it at all i just accepted it not even get a blood test then yeah like it's taking me till now to get it just to test if it was something physical because i was you know a healthy eater you know exercised so i couldn't work it out then and so i just sort of brushed it off and figured it would work itself out but i think you're right because uh, since the breakup i spent two weeks just pacing around my neighborhood <laughs> thinking about the relationship and it, th that was one of the thoughts I had why didn't I just once every week take a walk for an hour and do nothing but reflect on my relationship in, in yeah. this sense but in, in what you're saying as well just on parts of your life wow. every time I go anywhere I, I ride my bike a lot I walk a lot I've always got headphones on listen to music or podcasts yeah. but I think it's so important to just have some time for yourself because when do we just think especially nowadays with with phones <laughs> yeah, yeah. and you know we're, we're constantly distracting ourselves 
that's one of my biggest takeaways from the from the last few weeks is just how much time I've had to just reflect on life, which I'd never gave any time to before. And it sounds now that you're saying it, it sounds like such a simple thing to do. Exactly. Yeah. And so the, I think for myself included, like one thing where I notice a lot of people will take time to reflect it's on their career progression, mm-hmm. which ultimately. The reason why most of us get into whatever we're doing anyway is because we want to support the relationships, the the adventures, the lifestyle, the the physical health, all that sort of stuff. But you know, it's like you said, it doesn't happen overnight. Like becoming vulnerable, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't just wake up fat one day. It's small negative habits over a long period of time where you look in the mirror and you go, put on 20 kilos. How'd that happen? Or you know, I'm unhappy. I don't even know what's happening in my relationship now. I'm so disconnected. Day after day, you might come home and instead of hugging like he used to, or giving a kiss, or talking, you're walking the door and I had a shit day. I'm on my phone now. I just want to chill out. And we don't work on. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I think with your career is maybe the one place that we all do focus on it because we are told to from an early age. Like your career is everything. And for me personally, a, a lot of these issues I'm talking about have come because I put my career first and foremost for the last 15 years. And every other aspect of my life has fallen by the wayside yeah. and suffered because of it. I was 15 when I decided that I wanted to, you know, make a living off yeah. music. But I also knew it was going to be an incredibly hard industry. And so if I was going to do it, I wanted to give it 100%. Yeah. And I sacrificed a lot and compromised a lot in doing that. Yeah didn't go out much, didn't have relationships. I'd spend all my time in my room working on music. Now, the result of that was I did get to where I wanted to go. And so the the hard work paid off. But when I reached the goal or what I always thought was the goal, I didn't feel fulfilled. It didn't feel as rewarding as I thought it would because I'd I'd put so much pressure on reaching a goal, thinking that that would give me fulfillment. That would make me happy. Happiness would come when I hit that goal. So the 10 years that I've just spent doing nothing but trying to get to this spot and making sacrifices and compromises will pay off because I'll achieve happiness when I get to this goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course that didn't happen. <laughs> I got there, realized I felt no different yeah. and realized I missed the whole journey. Yeah. The journey getting there is the best part. Yeah. And I'm lucky to have felt that at, at 25 because it, it was a big shift for me. Yeah. Um, a lot of people unfortunately realize that at 40 yeah, yeah, and they definitely. get to where they're going and then hence they have their midlife crisis um so it was really important to me f- uh, it was a really important lesson for me to learn then that it's all about the journey but it also has made me realize that life is all about balance i know it's another one of those cliches but i was putting way too much focus in that and letting all other aspects of my life suffer when the result of that may have been, you know, I'm content with my career, but it didn't fulfill me in the way that I I thought it would. Yeah. And so I think that balance is so important. And that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm, I'm sort of reshifting for the first time in my life, my focus from my career to my relationships, um, just rebalancing it. Yeah. I think that's, really that's the most important part. I actually had a friend a week ago say I had a friend giving up smoking and she had gone two months without smoking. But on this particular night, she really wanted a cigarette yeah. and I was being a bit hard on her. I was like, you're better than this addiction. You can do it. Yeah. And another one of my friends that was there said, well, you know, you're addicted to work. And it, it kind of hit me and I started to get a bit defensive. I'm like, oh, it's, it's not the same thing. And he's like, well, you literally spend all day from morning till night working on music. You won't go out. You'll stay in and work on music. You don't do anything yeah. but work on music. And it was what it was like what you just said before. It seems so obvious. I don't know how I didn't see that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, holy shit you're right yeah. I'm, ad- I'm addicted to, to work yeah. but I didn't think of it as a bad thing because you know in my mind it's not like being addicted to, to cigarettes yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's something that you know it's it's my livelihood and it's something that I enjoy and I think that's where I was confused because cigarettes is something that other people enjoy yep. so I thought well it's something that I enjoy and it's how I make my living so it's fine to be obsessed with it but it's just an absurd thought to give all your time to one thing let every other aspect of your life suffer and so that was that really hit me and it's again can be something so simple and obvious i never once questioned that i knew that well i didn't think i was addicted to it i knew that i loved it and i knew that it was my career and therefore i thought it was okay to be addicted to it and i can now see how so much of other aspects of my life have suffered um something you touched on before which was 
when we go back to focusing on the journey and obviously you know you want to check in to do that because I had this same thing where someone's like all you do is work and I used to like all I've ever f- feel like since I've been with Amy is like I work a lot and like some t- like I let a lot of other aspects fall in way and now I like, you know I got my CrossFit and I got my work and I was obsessed with both of the, both of those but it was probably seven months ago and s- since then the Man That Can project has blown up but what people don't see is like a lot of people say all you do is work I work a lot like I work 10 hours a day fair. like that's probably the average but in that time like I catch up with people who support what I do and also making me feel good like they're the right people rather than in the past and I think a lot of people view it this way it's like you've got to be going to all the events and doing you got to always be seen right by the people who judge you but a lot of that shit I never felt good doing that like I I think since I've become and where a lot of men lack or what a lot of men lack is that certainty in self and when we don't have certainty in self we don't know who we really want to hang out with we don't know what we want to say yes or no to so we just go through the motions we rock up things and we're like fuck I don't want to be here or you you hang out with somebody like that was awesome but we never go why did I actually like that or why didn't I like that and get into a point where it's like right I'm certain I fucking don't like being in environments where there's constantly drinking I know that for a fact so why would I ever go to an event like that yeah. it just doesn't make sense I would rather go right I know I'm working 10 hours a day because I love 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 what I do and I have awesome stuff like this this is what I would consider work but then I also got mates who work in a similar space so we got a good relationship but we also talk about how I can grow and they can grow so it's like a friendship that is supported by wanting to help you better or they might challenge me right rather than being in a, a friendship where there's no value but you're just showing up because you feel you know it's the right thing to do which is what a lot of people do and I think um you know going through that journey and that realization is like I know for full well I'm never going to stop working on what I work on because it's the most rewarding thing I get to do but I also know outside of that like I'm if I don't like someone or if I don't like doing certain things I'm not going to do it like I'm not going to I would rather people go you're you know you don't change it up but I know I'm doing the things that I want to be doing yeah. rather than just trying to please people and go, all right, I'll come for one beer here and yeah, yeah. see if they're going headbutting the fucking glass. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, just to be clear, I'm not against being a workaholic. I, <laughs> I, 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 think, I was like, you're attacking me now? <laughs> I think it's all about balance. I yeah. think as long as you feel like you're you, you're balancing the other parts of your life. And ba- it's balance as well. Is like it's, it's a, I think striving for balance, but balance is, and you'll, I know you'll agree with this, it's like, it goes in ebbs and flows depending on what it like if you have a goal at the moment like if you you've got an album coming out right like a goal is probably going to lean you to focus a bit more on music than other areas but then you know coming into the holiday season you're probably going to spend more time chilling out and with family and friends right. right like so it's all ways about checking in and making sure it fulfills what you want at that point sure. in time yeah naturally because there are going to be months where you have to work yeah. non-stop and I, and I think that's important to recognize that there are yeah, they're, they're going to be a lot of ebbs, yeah. ebbs and flows, but that's why the constant reflection is is good yeah. to be able to see that. Yep, yeah, okay, this month's been I've focused more on work, but I've got this coming up where I can chill out. That's bit. why I this is random, but I love being. I'm the, feel like I'm one of the most structured, organized people. Well, and Amy's definitely not, but like I love having it mapped out. Like I've got my whole year next mapped out where I'm doing events, when I'm holidaying, all that sort of stuff, because I know if I stick to that plan like I'm going to get the best of everything yeah you're going to get that flow yeah it's yeah. rather than going far out I've just done 2020 I haven't had, haven't had a holiday I haven't even had a weekend away yeah. right or you know and even going down to the point of my days like 3pm till 5pm every day is training mm-hmm. right? people don't need to train that long that's what I choose to do but then it's like from 5pm that's Amy time or like yeah. you know what I mean like it's and that's that. it that's important that's yeah. the balance and that's not something I had and with music as well you know, you'll, you'll fall into a, a flow or the zone yeah. at a time that you you can't pick. Yeah. And so I would I would wake up and immediately start working on music. But I might be hitting the zone around the time that my partner would get home, and she would have left at six a.m. She gets back at six p.m. She's gone all day. She'd bust in the room and want nothing more to just jump on me, hug me, kiss me, and talk about her day. It's like, where are we going here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, I would be in the zone and I'd be working on a song. And I'm torn between, like, I obviously want to give her the, the time. Yeah. And then I can see that she's excited to see me. And she's just gotten home after a big day. But I'm also right in the middle of something. And, you know, when it's something creative, it's 
it you may lose the entire idea so the balance for me is that i i should have realized that at 6 p.m i close the laptop yeah. i focus on my relationship yeah that's it I've, I've, I've spent all day working yeah and now it's time for my partner yeah. and and other aspects of, of my life you yeah. know call my mum, hang yeah. out with friends I think it's just important to to know when to sort of close the book. Yeah, because you can look at that in a in a in a positive way as well. It's like you may never get that that idea back or that flow state back around that specific thing, but at the same time, if you're disciplined with your time, it's like it wasn't meant to be. Like if you look at it from that point, it's like I wasn't efficient with my time or getting into the flow state it wasn't right today. Like that's that because I'm the same as well. Like Amy gets home some days and I'm like oh, a few more emails or I gotta do this and you're like. But then if I would ref- reflect on that, which, like, if I were to do it right now, I'm like, well, was I as productive as I could have been during the day? Probably not. I scrolled Instagram for an hour and I, sure. I wasted this. And that probably then brings me to the point of say, every time we choose to do something, we're sacrificing time from something else. So every time you, you know, choose to go in the studio, you're taking time away from your relationship. Every time I get on the computer, I'm, like, even us doing this podcast, we're sacrificing something. Mm-hmm. So we need to make sure that the sacrifice is fucking worth it. Yeah. Because I know darn well just even thinking about it now, like me scrolling Instagram is probably not worth wasting time yeah, 100%. doing a lot of other things. Yeah, well, I was always plagued by this thought that if I went out tonight, I might not write the next hit. And this is like from 19 onwards. Yeah. Because a song or an idea can come at any point, it's, it's so fickle. Even the beginnings of Geronimo started five minutes before a show yeah. uh, just because I was warming up backstage and to think if I didn't do that that day then that song wouldn't exist and so that's how I, that's that plagued my mind and look at that though like the show broke your flow state right you were in flow state before doing the, yeah. the riff and whatever yeah. and then it's like oh, I gotta close the laptop and go on even though you weren't on a laptop but you had no, to go true, out to yeah. show it really was just the beginning yeah. and then the idea had to be refined later on but that is an interesting way of thinking about it but I was always just sort of played by that thought that, well, what if I didn't pick it up five minutes before that show? And how many other times am I not doing that and not writing, mm. un- you know, another smash hit sort of thing? And so that was something that just kept me in, yeah. kept kept me from going out. I think exactly the same way, but now that you're saying it, it's resonating with me, that by hoping that it's just going to happen by sitting at home, you're also missing out on what else could come to it because you know what you're going to do when you get home you're going to play around the guitar I know I'm going to sit in front of the computer and do what we need to do but by going out and putting ourselves in different situations it also provides an opportunity to grow or you might meet someone or you might hear one thing or a noise that goes holy shit that's a like if you're hearing music I don't but like if you hear something you might go oh that's a sound or a riff or something now and that is your idea to go home to yeah or even just the experience of life that might you know inspire an emotion where you're like exactly yeah it, you know, in any case, it's just not a healthy way to live life. Yeah. We're missing human connection. Exactly, yeah. You know, to stay in every day in case you're... It's just like the idea of not having, wanting to leave to, to not... You might get hit by a bus, so, you know, yeah. therefore never leave the house sort of thing. So I, I wasn't living in that sense. It, it was something that was keeping me contained in an unhealthy way. Um, and so that's, I guess, where you can take your career a little too seriously I'd love to know is like what's different like in the way that you spoke to yourself let's say two years ago as opposed to right now like what what do you feel have been the significant changes that may resonate with someone listening or watching well the biggest change like obviously having the breakup but having that time to reflect yeah. you know I was actually meant to be in LA um, yeah. with the guys but I for the first time made a decision for my health and well-being over my career yeah. and I decided to cancel to spend this time I'm so glad I did because I've had three weeks now to do nothing but reflect on my life and um, I've been fortunate that I've had that time to do that yeah. a lot of people will go through these experiences and have to k- keep working yeah. and uh, they just distract themselves from actually properly um, going through the motions of, yeah. of the breakup or any sort of breakdown and I think that that's the biggest takeaway is that who would ever do that when do we ever just spend three weeks spending every second of the day yeah. thinking about your life all aspects of it yeah. so that's the big takeaway from this is that moving forward I want to start to reflect weekly on my life where I'm at where my relationships are at where my career is at and start to set sort of short term goals 
uh, which I think are much better than a long-term goal, if you're under the uh, impression that reaching that long, long-term goal will give you sort of fulfillment and happiness. Yeah, well, it's almost like you set that long-term goal, but you go, my non-negotiables to achieve that are maintaining X, Y, Z. Because exactly. actually, even when you, like, ebbs and flows of the emotions like you experience that and they're all fun like I they're not obviously fun at the time but when you, if you can have that awareness you go actually I'm experiencing sadness and it's, it's fucking awesome because it's part of the journey and I know tomorrow I might be buzzing looking back at this going oh that was silly or you know that would that, that gave me the downtime I needed to just sit there and reflect or do all that sort of stuff and you look back like if you look back on 10 years and I look back on 10 years it's like it's been a wild ride like it's been fun and we've all experienced a whole heap of stuff and in all of those experiences, there's a lot of lessons which we never take the time to, like you said, reflect on and take those lessons to go, this is how I could do things differently to make my life more fulfilling and purposeful and feel happier about myself. Sure. But if we, anyone can do it right now, you can reflect over the last two years and there's a lot of learnings there for you. Yeah, and if anyone's in my position and they're either in a relationship or about to enter a relationship yeah. with these walls and that, that fear of being vulnerable, I would say... Do your best to break them down and dive in and love wholeheartedly because it's going to be way more beneficial for the relationship and yourself uh, to, to fully experience that love that we all deserve. Mate, it's been great. <laughs> we got to do a part two. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for having Mate, me. Thanks for jumping on. And where can people find you if they want to reach out? And Yeah, I'm a music producer, so you can, you can follow me on... Uh, Instagram at Jay Bavino. Well, yeah, if anyone wants to even just share what you took away from Jay, drop him a message, slide into the DMs. It's always exciting getting feedback. Um, you got a plan to catch, man. Thanks for jumping on. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Ciao. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart, and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.